What is up, TFA? How are all you doing? Appreciate you uh, hanging on and waiting for us. Uh, Walido, Eduardo, rocking with us in the chat already. We appreciate you guys. Walido just, you know, just, just he, he, he was priming us. But look, look at this nice little comment. You know, he's not coming to you trying to throw shade. He's not throwing a, a start-sit decision in your face. Walido coming through with, uh, with, with the nice comments. We appreciate that, man. We do have some ships to win. That's what we're here for. Got uh, got Abraham rocking with us as well. You guys, uh, you guys have been awesome all year. We uh, we really appreciate you. Michael Hoffman rocking with us. Obviously, if you're watching, you can see down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed to win that Allen Robinson jersey. And we have a a very special guest appearance at Bad Boy King today, boy. It, it is so sexy. Did it? I'm. Uh, I really want to. I really wanted to take it out of the plastic and just like, just stare at its beauty. But this is for the people. Not going to do it. Obviously, got the uh, the COA there sticker. That sig. That sig. That's that's a nice signature. That's that's smooth. So. It is here. It is actually a thing. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, Kev, how, how are you, man? I, dude, I'm just so amped on this uh, on this A Rob jersey and running on two hours of sleep that I, I, I don't I don't know what to, what to say next. You you take you take the mic. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> please, please it's, it's, it's going well. It's going well. You know, it's week 14. We're in the fantasy playoffs territory. So now. Uh, you know, all the fun and games we're all with. It's time to get roll up the sleeves, you know, and get down to business, you know. So uh, this is uh, it's a fun time of the year because, uh, you know, hopefully in a couple of weeks we're all celebrating championships and uh, counting that money. And, uh, you know, other than that, uh, looking forward to giving away that jersey and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, just trying to give back to all the people that have uh, helped us along the way to grow. So, yeah, for sure. We, uh, we, Kind of made a, a, a very tiny mention on Twitter, but we have we haven't posted this anywhere else. This is uh this is strictly for for the YouTube fam. This is, uh this has been awesome to to see this growth and to see a lot of the same faces in the chat every single week. Xenon already in here just talking about rolling up a doobie, playoff bound. Hey man, wh wh whether whether it's whether weed is your thing, whether it's a, a nice glass of you know cold milk. If you're a milk person, beer, wh whatever it is, it, it is playoff time. So we're uh, we are definitely celebrating that. Um, got a, got a question here already coming from Michael Hoffman, and this is uh, this is something that is that is uh, you know we were hoping that at the beginning of the playoffs we were getting Christian McCaffrey. Comes out today that he has the thigh injury now. Is is there? Do we do we really know anything else? Is he is he doubtful? Is it just a, a wait and see kind of thing? He still was limited today, so he still practiced even though he had it. And it's something that I think that happened actually last week when he when he started practice again. So um, I I don't think it's anything that serious. And I no, I I am not concerned whatsoever 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 with. Uh, so Remix. if he's active, if he's active, he you can expect the the full allotment of snaps that he played. We, we got the same thing. Uh, a couple pro tip, well, one pro tip, because um, the last time that when he he was coming back from injury, we got a uh, a tweet from Ian Rappaport who said that you know he was going to be limited and he was going to share time with Mike Davis. Pro tip number one: never listen to anything that Ian Rappaport says. As a matter of fact. If he does say something that can help you, send it to your league mates because he is for sure going to be wrong. Every single time he tells us that, oh, this guy's going to be limited, he's not going to – something like that. And when it comes to any, any terms of like playing time or anything, he's always wrong every single time. So for sure, that same week, he, said he put that out, right? And Christopher Caffrey played like 90% of the snaps. Kerry had 90% of the opportunity. He did the same thing with Austin Eckler as well where he said he was going to be limited. Did not happen. So – don't listen to Ian Rappaport. Anyways, uh, I think I think if he plays, I think he plays all the snaps, right? Like, uh, there's no reason to bring him back and just have him be limited or anything like that. And even a 
80% Christian McCaffrey is better than most anything else you probably have. Uh, so it is a nice weapon to get back for this time of the year. So that is a positive. And I will also say, speaking of not just him, but it sounds like Chris, or George Kittle, if somehow, if George Kittle is available out there, that he should be added. Because it sounds like he could be back here this week or even possibly next week. Um, so we have to wait and see on that. Now, that they may change their mind because the whole thing was playoffs and how, how that was going to work. Um, but with them getting the doors blown off them by the Bills, that's going to hurt a little bit. But but regardless of that, he is a nice stash. And let's be honest right now, your bench should be very flexible, right? Because you, you're basically we're now we're on a week-to-week basis. You have to win to keep going unless you're on a bye week. Now, if you're on a bye week, that's also a different scenario that things you should be looking at because you should be setting yourself up for the next week already. Like that's such a huge advantage to be able to do that where everybody else is like hi, super highly focused on this week. Like you can look at waivers and like add a defense for, for the following week. Cause you don't even care. Cause you're not playing this week. Right. So use that, that bye week to your advantage as well. Don't just sit there and, and rest on your laurels, I guess. Yeah. You know, you can definitely kick your feet up, but kick your feet up with your, your phone in your hand and make sure you're making those, you know, the, those chess moves, not checkers. Chess. Make sure you're making uh, you know those moves to make sure that you are you're setting yourselves up as well as you can. Abraham, that that's that's rough, buddy. To miss Abraham. Five. Listen to the DFS DJ Nation and play some DFS if you can. I don't know. Maybe he's not old enough. I, I never. I don't know. But as long as you're old enough and you can play DFS, we got you. We can we can win you some money in DFS. And also the uh, the Saturday night prop talk video, if you're able to partake in that, had a uh, had ourselves a nice week this last week. Eduardo, you hit the nail on the head. A jersey for the people, by the people, in order to make a perfect fantasy team. That's that needs to be a slogan on a on a T-shirt or something. Maybe uh, maybe TFA bumper stickers. I don't know. Maybe maybe that'll be the uh, the next thing. But we we have our our first question here coming from Robert Miley. Uh, 11 and two because of us. Let's go. Let's go. I guess it, it, this isn't a question. What's good is, uh, your, your team. That's what's good. Man, picked up James Rob. Nice. I'm, I'm surprised you were able to pick up James Robinson whenever Chubb went out, but. Well, I'll also say too, like, I don't think there's been a fantasy player this year outside of. Corey Davis, and I don't think he hasn't even been as disrespected, but I don't think there's been a player this year that's been as disrespected as James Robinson has. That man has been nothing but elite. Like, he has been a top two or three running back this entire year, and he gets zero fucking credit for it. Yeah. Like, there's been no talk about it. He's just He just flies under the radar every single week, and I, I think some of it's because I think people just fully expect that he's going to, like, the Jaguars are going to draft somebody next year, and he's going to be dust. I don't think so. Like the dude has been excellent on a team that's been terrible. Like I, I think he's earned himself the starting role for the from this team. Like I, there's no other, there's no argument against it in my opinion. No, I agree, and especially with the uh, the knees that they have going forward, it would be very short sighted of them to spend, you know, uh, and even day two capital on, on a running back with with all the needs that that team has, but. Our first actual question in here is coming from our guy Eduardo. Would you pick up Kiki and drop CD? This one's tough. I was hoping you were going to come out of the gate firing. Well, I would probably prefer to have CD. But do you have anybody else that you can drop? Is there any other option here instead of having it? Because I, I do like Kiki Kuti. He's not, not obviously the number two wide receiver uh, moving forward and could easily prop himself into the number one if Brandon Cooks gets hurt. Brandon Cooks is also dealing with injuries. He did practice on a limited basis yeah. today. I think it was a foot and neck injury. Um, but obviously, you know, Brandon Cooks has never been one to stay healthy for an entire season. So I will say that, that you could um, – you know, I would like to get Kiki Kuti, but I, I would probably hold on to CeeDee Lamb because this this Cowboy offense has looked a little bit better uh, recently anyways, right? They haven't looked like the complete dumpster fire that, that, that they were there for at least a month of the season. So things are looking a little bit better. Andy Dalton's looking a little bit better in this offense. 
So I think that that is good news for CD Lamb um, moving forward for the last couple of weeks. So I would hate to drop him and help somebody else out. Yeah, let us know if you have anybody else that 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 you can drop because C- CD's getting his. That, that was it was good to see everybody get involved in this uh, this last game, and we know how good CD Lamb is with the uh, with the ball in his hands with the uh, the yak ability he has. And looking at sharp football stats, the Cowboys do have the eighth easiest pass defense schedule uh, weeks 14, 15, and sixteen. So that, that is definitely one thing to note. Houston sitting down there at 20th, but with somebody like Deshaun Watson, I don't think you're going to worry too much, you know, about about that, especially if Kiki is going to be operating out of the slot as well. That's not something I would uh, I would worry about too much. Walido has a question here. Uh, we looking at Acres, Booker, or Bernard with Jacobs and Mixon on the bench for the first round of the playoffs. Oh, it has to play Akers and Booker or Bernard. Who you uh who you sitting? I think I'm gonna sit Booker. I just don't like that matchup. DeForest Buckner should be coming back. Yeah, I would probably stick with uh Akers and Bernard. Josh Allen going up against the Steez or Matt Stafford. I'm going to go with Josh Allen, but Michael, depending on what the rest of your team looks like, let us know what the rest of your team looks like, because I think if you're shooting for upside, I think it's actually Stafford. Um, it, I, I was thinking that like uh, the video, which, so we have two videos coming out uh, tomorrow, uh, running back and wide receiver rankings that we went through uh, solo um, offline. And we'll be going through the rankings and talking about these guys and Stafford, is uh, he played, you know, so now with, with Matt Patricia gone, the dictator that he was, uh, Darren Bevel basically said, hey, guys, let's let us let it rip, boys. And uh, that's exactly what they did. They threw the ball deep, 31% of his passes, and he completed 16 passes for 10 or, or, 10 or more yards, which is uh, absolutely insane. And so now with this offense, and they have completely opened things up, and it sounds like there's the possibility that Kenny Galladay could actually be back this week. He actually practiced pregame um, before the Lions and uh, the Lions and Bears game last week, so that is obviously a positive sign. So if he can actually return this week, that's a big boost to this offense going against a Green Bay secondary, who you know is anchored by one of the best corners in the league. But the rest of the the secondary certainly is beatable, and so this could be a real shootout here for Matt Stafford. So I do like Matt Stafford this week quite a bit, and. I think if you're a team that is playing somebody this week who you feel like has a better team than you and you're looking for that ceiling, I would probably prefer to play Stafford. But, you know, it really just depends on the situation where, you know, maybe I would still lean Josh out. Because I have Josh out like QB 12 going against Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's, it's obviously going to be Allen's probably his toughest matchup. But the Steelers cornerbacks can absolutely be had. And then you always have the the extra out that Josh Allen has with, with his legs, his legs. that can, yeah. that can, you know, buoy your, your fantasy week as well. Andrew Walker lost Fuller. That's a rough one. Uh, looking for a waiver replacement. So how do you feel about Marvin Jones, Debo Samuel, Brandon cooks or Cootsie? I would probably go Debo or Brandon cooks. One of the two. Man, I was. If the Lions are going to continue to play the way they did this past week, <clears throat> for me, it'd be between Cooks and Jones. Because especially if Kittle is coming back and Ayuk is healthy, man. I, I would go Cooks, Jones. If if Kittle does not come back, I, I would have Debo third and then Cootie. 
if Kittle, obviously we're not going to know this before you have to make this decision. So for me, it's between Cooks and Cooks and Jones. I really wish we like we we can know for sure. Well, all we can if, worry about is this week anyway. So how would you rank them just for this week if you had to play one? Because I think that's the only thing you really can look at it as because yeah, there is no true. next week. You know, we can't just be like right. uh, and, and try to venture down the road. So like just for this week, I would go Brandon Cooks. You like that matchup against the Bears better than Marvin against the the Pack? It really depends on what happens with uh, with with Kenny Galladay, but I don't know if he's going to have the time to wait, right? With waivers going through and everything else, yeah. like we're like we're not really going to know until Friday if Kenny Galladay's back because if Kenny Galladay is back, it kind of changes the complexion of everything for Marvin Jones. Like we've seen in games that Kenny Galladay has played, like he is kind of second fiddle or actually third or fourth fiddle because DeAndre Swift also got an limited practice today. Um, so I mean, he could end up being like fourth in the in the pecking order in terms of targets. But if if Kenny Galli doesn't play, then he's obviously obviously the number one. So uh, I'm trying to see if if we got any more updates. But Wednesday's practice reports are, are awful, anyways. They don't really do anything for us because a lot of players rest those days, anyways, or they get limited in. Like Thursday and Friday are the really the big day for practices. Um, but I will say, I guess Kenny Galladay did not practice today, so. Um, I would probably, I would probably go Marvin Jones. Wow, I would go, I would go Brandon Cooks, and then it would be Marvin Jones for me for this week. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I'm gonna roll Marv. But it, it would be Marvin Cooks. So Andrew, whoever you feel uh, more comfortable rolling with and then he has another question we'll just touch on uh touch on quickly my starting rb is good for playoffs james robinson and gaskin plus mostert yeah i mean james robinson is, is like a is a top three play this week against tennessee uh his usage has just been absolutely insane yeah. uh i think it was a, like last was it last week or the week before i think it was last week was the first game since like week nine that another running back had touched the ball other than james robinson what Yes. That's bonkers. <laughs> is that's how yeah, it is fucking ridiculous. Like there is no other running back that you could say that about that just that receives any work. That man does not come off the field. Uh, so Oh no, never mind. That that wasn't from that wasn't from Andrew. Go on. Sorry. Did I just see a, a pick up Corey Davis question? Yeah, I, I thought that was with uh for some reason I was putting that with Andrew's question. And I was gonna say, well, obviously this is uh it's it's Corey Davis. But that was uh, that was with our our guy Xenon out here smoking smoking the Kush. Speak, yeah, speak I just of need it. a weed. I need some weed. With... <laughs> Anyways, I'm the, I'm as white as it gets. So oh yeah, it's it's really bad whenever we try to make any references like that. It's uh, I know. It's, I'm, wearing it's a, I'm wearing a Santa hat over here trying to make weed. I mean, what is wrong with this? This is a family show. <laughs> Merka. Uh McKissick worth a stash with uh I, I think he is, but who would you drop to pick up McKissick? I, I don't know if I see anyone that didn't he say that is, is this the one that he said that Corey Davis was also? Yeah, or pick up and stash Corey Davis. Yeah, well one, Xenon, why are you carrying 14 tight ends? <sighs> like Kittle's fine. Because you know if he comes back, but drop Janu like at this. Point. I was gonna say you dropping Janu and picking up Davis. Yeah, I mean you're not no way you're making a move anywhere else for McKissick then. No, I would much rather have Corey Davis. I think I mean like we like we talk like well like we talked about last night, which which uh, hopefully you all hear when you go listen to it. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, anyways, but Corey Davis has been just criminally uh, undervalued this year. He only has one game all year that he hasn't scored double digits. One that he hasn't scored double digit fantasy points. Yeah, I don't know how many. I could guarantee you, it's probably on one hand, maybe less than one hand that the other wide receivers you could say that about. Like he has been just yeah. as consistent as they come. He a lot of the weeks haven't been like monster weeks, except for last week when he went off for like thirty five. 
But a lot of, I mean, but he's consistently getting you like 12 to 17 fantasy points week in, week out. And that you, you can't ask for more than that because like, there's nothing worse than a wide, your wide receiver gets you like three fantasy points and fucking kills your week because of it, right? But like Corey Davis consistently, he's, he's wide receiver 17 on the season. So, yes, if Corey Davis is somehow out there, throw him to the squad because he deserves to be out there. I'm just going to throw this one in here while we're uh, talking about Xenon's squad. Would you start Davis over Ridley Diggs or Robinson? No. Okay. And unless there's a flex option. I don't know if he starts three and then a flex, but. He didn't really say yeah. on that one. Yeah. I, I was just looking to see if there was potentially any. Anybody else, but I, I think you roll with what you have. But Davis is absolutely worth a stash, and you know, depending on what happens with Julio down the stretch, whenever Julio is out, Matt like we would expect Calvin Ridley to step up, but Matt Ryan really suffers without Julio. So I think that's a situation going forward. You know, if Julio were to miss time or for whatever reason, I think you could think about sliding Davis in for for Ridley uh, potentially. Control versal. Lamar or Taysom? Lamar. Andrew, pick a tight end to start. Gronk, Andrews, Goddard, or Gesicki? You're mute. You're muted. Rookie move. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. Mark Andrews. Who do you throw second? Is uh, is Andrews come Maybe off the, the the COVID list? Yes. Okay. He's he's already been activated. He's good okay. to go. He's ready to roll. All right. Yeah. Then it's it's Andrews. I, I I agree. Uh, Andrews and then Gronk for me there. And Andrew, do you have all these tight ends? Because if you do, my guy, drop them all. Except, <laughs> like, you don't need to have all those tight ends. Like, I'm just saying, and maybe maybe it's a shorter league, and there's or it's a two tight end league or something. But if it's not, it's a one tight end league. Like, and you hold all those tight ends, drop them all, and pick up running backs and wide receivers. Yeah, and just rock with uh, rock with Andrews the yeah. rest of the way. Ronnie Daniel wants to know Ebron or Ingram. Is Danny Dimes going to be back this week? Yes, yes. They said he's back this week, barring any setback. I'm going to go Ingram. It's close, though, because I do like Ebron a lot as well. Are we just going to get Gallman run, running all over uh, the cards again, though? Not cards again, but I'm just running all over. Fools. I mean, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think I mean they're going to have to pass the ball sometime. And it depends on what Cardinal offense shows up, to be honest with you. You know, because yeah. I don't know. what I mean – I will say this. Kyler has to be hurt. Like he has to be much yeah. more hurt than what they're letting on with him because 100%. like he just has not been the same guy since he's taken that injury. Like he is not running. He is doing everything he can to protect himself. The it, like, it's weird too looking at like Deandre Hopkins route tree. Like it's been really, really odd. Like they're not moving him around at all. He's literally playing on one side of the field and running pretty much the same route every single time. Like it is, Super odd what they're doing with him right now. And there was like last week against the um, the Rams, there were several opportunities that he had the, the opportunity to throw the ball deep and he just didn't. And so I don't know what's going on with him right now. And he's not looking to run, which really zaps some of his upside with Kyler. But, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe they can get a little bit healthier this week and, and do a little bit more because right now they're, they're about out of the playoffs. They're about to find themselves outside of the playoffs. If they don't, they really kind of need to win out here now uh, to even have an opportunity at that. I'm going to go Ebron here. I, I don't think either run game is going to be able to go. I do think both offenses are going to be able to move the ball. Just not sure what we get with, with New York. 
we, we we've been waiting on that Ingram breakout game. We we got it, but like the, I don't know. I, I I think I just trust Ebron a little bit more, as long as he can you know catch the ball and actually hold on to it. But I I think both are in fine spots. I just lean Ebron with uh with the way that I'm expecting that that game to to flow. Well, Lido, two running backs, two wide receivers, and two flex here. So Cook, Mixon, Jacobs, Gordon, Dobbins, Booker. Obviously not Mixon. Not Booker. It's gonna be it's good. It's gonna be Cook and Melvin Gordon for me. Yeah. And then Debo, Godwin, DJ Moore, Cooks, Parker. We don't have to worry about DJ Moore. He's already out. So, yes, with the with the with the with the Rota. Um, so it's Godwin and Cooks, and then two flex. Give me Ty and Dobbins, or no? Give me Parker and Dobbins. Parker and Dobbins. I'll go T.Y. and Dobbins. I don't like that matchup for for Miami. I have Tanya. Should I go out and pick up Logan Thomas? Finally, for the brand, it only took 13 weeks. But Logan Thomas, finally, after talking about him on every goddamn waiver show, that we ever did finally gets it going. Would you go pick up Thomas because of the week 15 matchup? Uh, let's see. Week 15 Packers have the Panthers and Washington gets Seattle. I would just stick with Tanya. Yeah, because that's an excellent matchup for Tanya too. Yeah, I, I don't think you have to worry about that. And as, as much as I want Logan Thomas to continue, you know, e- even eighty percent of what we saw this past game, I, I you know, I, I would just much rather hitch my playoff wagon to Aaron Rodgers instead of Alex Smith. So, if Jones is active, would you start Shepard over Juju? I really like Juju this week. So, I would not. I think this is a, I think this is a, a Juju week. And again, the, the, the rankings video that we put together last night that will be hitting the uh, the TFA YouTube channel here uh, tonight and early tomorrow morning. I talked about Juju. He gets uh, what's Teron Johnson, I think, is their the, the name of their slot corner, and he has given up the second most catches and the second most yards in the slot. Obviously, that's where Juju operates. Trey White, he's only obviously going to be able to cover one of those outside receivers, but I think this has I think this has Juju and Ebron week written all over it. Are you rolling? Are you rolling Shepard or Juju for Roberto? Yeah, I think I would go Sterling Shepard here. Um, I just like him a little bit more. Juju, I have Juju at wide receiver thirty-five, and um, I have Shepard at wide receiver thirty. I, um, so yeah, I, I, I would lean towards more Shepard. Um, he has kind of taken over as kind of the alpha in this offense now. Uh, Darius Slayton, uh, since Sterling Shepard has come back, like this has kind of been phased out of the offense a little bit. And, you know, I know last week he only scored 3.2 and wasn't a great game, but that was with uh, that was with uh, Colt McCoy. Now, I mean, you're looking at since he's come back from injury, week seven, I mean, 17.9, 15.4, 11.7, 10.7, 13.8. Uh, with Daniel Jones here. And some of those are some pretty tough matchups that he was able to succeed in. So um, he's seeing at least six targets in every single game outside of last week. So um, 
or no, he even had six last week. I apologize. That was receptions. He's had at least six receptions in every game besides last week, but he's got eight, 10, eight, six, eight, eight targets. He's running a ton of routes. Like there's a lot to like with Sterling Shepard. So I do like Sterling Shepard. I would probably prefer him a little bit more just because I feel like it's easier to project. Like, the Steelers passing offense is so hard to project because one week it's Claypool and the next week it's Deontay. And then, well, it's usually always Deontay, but one week it's Claypool. One week it's, it's, it's Juju. Like it's, it's tough to project a little bit here with this offense. And it is a good matchup against, um, uh, with, with Buffalo, Buffalo secondary is not for, even Tredavious white hasn't been that great this year, but, uh, you know, I, I would just, prefer, I would just slightly prefer uh, Sterling Shepard a little bit more here. Yeah, but like I said, I, I just think this matchup sets up well for for Juju. Trey White has been up and down. He's had some weeks where he looks like the Trey White we'd expect, and he has some other weeks where he does. You know, you you can hit him, but I, I, I like I said, I just like Juju this week. And then his second question is: Any Bengals wide receiver worth a start? I mean, you could. I mean, I, I think Tyler – I mean, we saw Tyler Boyd last week. He popped off for that 72-yard touchdown, and I was so tilting my face off because I had Tyler Boyd in TFS, and he got kicked out of the game. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, but uh, I still think Tyler Boyd is fine in the slot. Like, we've seen him in years past. And I think T. Higgins could suck. It's like, they're still chucking the ball uh, at an insanely high rate for a team with, with a really terrible backup quarterback. So, um, I think both – both T. Higgins and and Tyler Boyd, I mean, they're they're flex options. They're not anything more than that. And uh, and again, a matchup this week against Dallas. Like I think that that's something that people should be looking at as well. So I, I do like. Uh, I think you could go with either one of them this week, really. If yeah, you had to in a pinch. Yeah, it depends on who else your 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 other options are. Um, but that would be something that I would have to feel really good about the matchup. Obviously, depending on who you know, what, what other options you have. If you if this is the same team and you have all op- options like Shepard and Juju, I'm gonna I'm gonna start those two over any Bengals receiver just because I I, I, I simply can't trust that uh you know that that team and that that quarterback play. But like Kev was saying, in a pinch, if you had to, I, I think you could. But I, I would base that solely off of matchups for that particular week. While Lito in a 20 team league, you know, just setting his entire roster for him. Well, Lito, do, do your own work, man. Geez, this, this is getting old. Uh, just kidding. Two running backs, two wide receivers, one flex. So Chubb, Singletary, Akers, Malcolm Brown at running back. Chubb and Akers. Yeah. AB, Boyd, the aforementioned Tyler Boyd, Pittman, Judy, Tim Patrick, Galladay. If we get Galladay back, it'd be Galladay and AB. But if we don't, it would be AB and I think I would go. Yeah, Tyler Boyd. And then the flex, I would go Pittman. Any love for Tim Patrick here? I don't. I don't mind it, but I also feel like that we could see the, especially with all the weapons that the. Well, depending on what happens with Carolina, as long as we get CMC this week, but we, we're the, likely they're not going to have DJ Moore. They may not have Curtis Samuel, so they're going to be really down to uh, Robbie Anderson, Ian Thomas. Like you know, like this is not going to have a ton there, and so a ton of weapons in that offense. So uh, I, I could see where the the Broncos just run the ball 35 times. I don't mind Tim Patrick. Like Tim Patrick has been solid this year. Like he's the other option that I would, I would look at. It would be between Tim Patrick and Pittman for the flex for me. Yeah. But this matchup against the Raiders uh, should be a really good one for the Colts. Mm. Yeah. I, I think it's just safer to, to lean Pittman, but I, I, I am interested with, with Patrick. I mean, hopefully we get Galladay back. I, I would love to see Galladay in this offense now that they're opening things up and actually taking shots downfield and running at a, at a higher pace. This is going back to earlier with Eduardo. We, we were asking him if he had anybody else he could drop for 
Cootie, and he said that you know CD is the worst player on his roster. That's yes. also a nice flex, uh, Eduardo. Like I like yeah. how you kind of slide. There's just like a low, like a low end flex. Like uh, you know, flex it on us, okay? Yeah, we 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 see you. We see you. Anthony Acosta coming through with the uh, with the defense question: Cardinals defense or Washington? Cards get the Giants, and Washington gets uh, the Niners. Both on the road. Uh, give me Washington. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think Cardinals, uh, they're, they're starting to pick up some – some injuries on the uh, on their defensive side as well, and Washington is low key been a been a really nice defense this year, especially that front. Dave Walker needs two out of this group: Monty, Chubb, Eckler, Gallman. Damn it, Dave! Excellent work. Chubb for sure. I think it's Chubb and Eckler. Dave, Can who you, you running also, in the flex, my guy? Yes. Who you running in the flex? Can we get Montgomery in the flex? That's what I want to know. Yes. Mm. I, I really want to play Monty, especially with the you know the, the run that he's been on the past couple of weeks. But I do think Eckler bounces back. So with playoffs on the line. I have to go Chubb and Eckler, but let's uh, let's see if we can find a way to get Monty in there as well because he has another excellent matchup this week going up against the uh, the Texans who you know can't can't stop anything. Karn rocking with us in the chat. Good to see you. And also, if you're here for the first time and you're interested. In that Allen Robinson jersey, which now is at the, the, the Kutzer household, make sure you slam that subscribe button. That's going to be uh, – we're going to give that away during the live stream on Sunday, December 27th as we head into uh, championship day. So, uh, make you know, make sure you're doing that. Hit us with a thumbs up while you're at it. We, uh, we appreciate you guys. Made it through the bye week. Now need advice on picking two running backs, two wide receivers, and a flex. Woo! Chubb, McCaffrey, Akers, J.K. Dobbins. So Chubb and CMC. Yep. Wide receivers, D-Hop, Woods, Debo, Juju, Pittman. I'm going to go D-Hop and Woods. Who are you throwing in the flex? Dobbins. Man, I I hate this matchup for. Or no, 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 excuse me. It'd be Acres. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, it'd be Acres. I would I would flex Acres. So New England's been really, it has not been very good against the run. Um we can go over it again, which we went over. Well, I guess no, no one's listened to that yet, so I need to stop saying that. But, <laughs> but uh, um, so right now uh, on the season, the Patriots are 27th in rush DVOA. They are also, um, where are they? At? Okay, yeah, they're also 25th in adjusted line yards. They are 30th in power success rate. They are 24th in second level and 32nd in stuff rate. So the Patriots are not very good on the ground at all. And as, as long as the Rams continue the same path as they went last week and give the ball, um, and as long as Akers plays that 60 to 70% of the snaps like he played last week, then I think Akers is, is, a, is a borderline RB1 this week in a matchup against the Patriots. So I, I really do like uh, Akers quite a bit and um, for this week. So that's why yeah, I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would actually uh, flex him. Yeah, golf, golf against the Pats just gives me the heebie-jeebies. 
Man. I really want to play Juju over Woods. Well, then say it. Say it with your chest. Give me Juju. Give me Juju over Woods. <laughs> is, is, is that how you do it? Yeah, that's how you do it. There we go. Yeah, give me. You know, th- th- this isn't a time to play scared. I don't like that that matchup with the Pats and Goff. And I mean, hopefully McVay learned his lesson from the Super Bowl where, you know, you can't just run the same fucking offense against Bill Belichick that you've run the entire goddamn year because you were going to get snuffed out. But, I, man, I just – I think the biggest change they would make would be running more 12 personnel and getting the, the tight ends more involved. Um, I, I do like the anchors play, but I'm, I am I just love this matchup for Juju. I'm sure it's going to come back to bite me in the ass because I haven't been on the Steelers all goddamn year. And now I'm talking talking up Juju, and I, I'm sure this is going to be one that just makes me look like an asshole. It's going to make me hate the Steelers even more than I already do. But uh, g- give me give me Juju. Carlos rocking with us. Kamara, Chubb, Carson, Gallman. Pick two and full PPR. I can't believe I'm about to do this, but I'm about to do it. Give me Nick Chubb and Chris Carson. Sit Alvin Kamara. Ooh. Man, that is that is where we have come. I think you have to. I know people are going to look at Alvin Kamara last week and say, oh, okay, he bounced back. He had 97 yards and a touchdown. But he's still not being utilized in the passing game, and that is a major problem for him. And now they get Philly, whose Philly's run defense has been really good. And, and so, like, I, I just don't think you can, you can trust Alvin Kamara in this matchup. If he doesn't find the end zone, like – He's toast, and I, this isn't the time to play around. Like Nick Chubb is, su- is such a is in a better matchup. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but like last night, Clayus Campbell looked like uh, like he was sixty years old trying to run out there, like you know, in the middle of that defense. So uh, I like Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb in his career, I mean, he's had massive. You know, what was it last year? Where he had that monster two hundred yard and like two touchdown game against against the Ravens. But and then Chris Carson, you know, going against the Jets. Now the Jets have been better against the run; they have been against the pass. But uh, his involvement in the passing game, I think, makes him stand out. So I'm sitting Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure where the receptions rank, but the Eagles are only, have only given up 44 catches for 349 yards to running backs, and the 349 yards are the uh, the seventh fewest in the league. So he's not. First of all, he's not being involved, like you said. But they're also stopping that through through the air too. So that's man. Yeah, I I I think you have to. I think you have to as well. Who would have thought in the fucking playoffs we'd be saying to to sit Alvin Kamara? But here we well, are. Well, the good news is here's the good news. If you can make it to next week, here's yes. the good news. Drew Brees is back. It's expected to be back next week, and that's when everything goes back to normal. Now we need to pick uh, receivers for Carlos. We need three of these also in a full PPR. D-Hop, Corey Davis, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, T. Higgins. First three. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm really interested at, at the end of the day to see who Trey White lines up against the most. Because I'm I'm not sure which one you try to erase, but Deontay Johnson runs enough of those shallow crossers that, again, as long as he can catch the ball, he should be able to take some of those and get you know get the the, the yards after catch and be able to give you a, a solid full PPR day there. Where with Claypool, I think you're kind of almost treating him as as a tight end where he's going to be a little bit more touchdown dependent. Wham, bam, thank you, Tam. These are my wide receivers, Cooks, A.J. Brown, Boyd, and Juju. Is there any player you would drop to pick up from waiver options? Marvin Jones, Corey Davis, or Crowder? Drop uh, drop uh, Tyler Boyd for Corey Davis. It pains my soul to say, but I, I completely agree. Uh, okay. Andrew only has Gronk and Andrews at a woo. J Mike in the chat, dude. 
J Mike, my guy. Love you, buddy. J Mike's the man. My my heart just stopped. My heart just skipped a beat. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm all J Mike. You have me. You have me flustered. Flustered live. I actually traded uh, Allen Robinson to J Mike in the one dynasty league that we're in. I traded at the before the season started. I traded A Rob and Rojo for Odell. Why? That to that, that. I didn't believe in Rojo. But and why I, would you even trade Allen Robinson for Roja or for for Odell? I was, dude. I was drinking that Cleveland Browns Kool Aid of like, man, Odell was playing with a hernia all year. Man, look what he did. He still had a thousand yards. Wait until he's healthy. And that the the health. No. <laughs> See, Walido, and this is the guy that you listen to. Listen to this. This is the guy that you claim. You know, okay. That that's why this. You know, I I you would never. I don't know what to tell you on that. J. Mike, good work fleecing this guy. Good good, good work, J. Mike. I wouldn't call it a fleece. That is a I, fleece. It's, it's, that's, that's, that's you got to take it to the cleaners. No. 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 I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't agree. You, you don't know anything about Dynasty anyway. <laughs> See, let's, let's not get on, on, on this fucking... Well, I could throw a guarantee on the box, but... Uh, rather take the butcher's word for it. I don't even know where. See, J. Mike, you have me all fucking flustered. I don't, I don't even know where, where we were. Well, Lena, does any receiver have a safer floor than a Rob in the league other than Devonte Adams? I mean, Corey Davis. <laughs> This year, Corey Davis, safer floor. I think in a normal season, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams. <laughs> Mixed by Mike Jones. Oh, that's great. Uh, I have one, Tyree Kill. Four? Yeah, do you know, here. Let me let me let me read you Tyreek's numbers this year: fifteen point six, twenty one point eight, twenty one point two, sixteen point four, eighteen point three. The one week against Buffalo, five point five, seventeen point five, twenty five point eight, thirty three point one, twenty seven, fifty seven point nine, and fourteen point eight. So come again with who, who is the who has the safest floor? That's this year. I think if if we look at look at last year, I think he's he's been a little bit more up and down. We we can't we can't spend time on fucking dynasty leagues and the and the Kansas City Chiefs here. We're not gonna get to anybody's questions if, if we start going down this road. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's get back well, to the people's questions. See, I, I'm trying to, but you fucking threw J Mike here in the in the middle of it, got me all all flustered. His comment made me laugh. I'm I'm running on two hours of sleep, and now J Mike's popping in here, just making my heart skip a beat. Look, look how handsome he is. We J- need to get Mike- we need we need to get him on a show one day. We need we need to get him on a show. Yeah, we've I I think we've been saying this for for way too long. We need to we need to make it. Actually, J Mike jumps on the Dynasty shows with us, but we do not let you come anywhere near those. No, because I would just shit all over it. Yeah, it would it would just be dumb. Karn traded Robbie Anderson and Corey Davis for McCaffrey. If if CMC comes back, I, I still think you you won that trade. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, right. I, I, I think there's a really, really good – I would say it's like 85 90% he plays this week. And and if he does, I don't think you you worry about it at all whatsoever. You plug him in and you, you sit back and you reap the rewards. I think we already hit Tam on this one. Kyle D. I have four running backs. Henry, Mustard, David Johnson, Gallman, and Gordon. Who's my RB2 and who do I flex? Melvin Gordon. And Gallman. 
is the uh, the the usage or the the matchup holding you back from DJ? Uh, all of it, all of it, <laughs> all of it. Actually, see, he's uh, he, I think I mean, you know, at best, you're looking at 13, 14 fantasy points, maybe, maybe from David Johnson. It's just tough. The, the, the way that they've been operating, and now, I mean, even last week, uh, they still are using Duke Johnson in the passing game as well. So that kind of zaps some of that upside as well with uh, David Johnson. And he was coming back from a concussion. It's not like he was coming back from like a soft tissue injury or anything like that to where like, you know, they were, they need to be conservative with them in any way. I know he's been out for a few weeks. So, um, but still, uh, it's just, he just doesn't have any ceiling. And like, they, they're, the way they're utilizing him just doesn't ever make any sense to me. Like, they just keep trying to run him right up the middle. And it doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. But so he uh, he only had ten carries last week, and he ran eighteen routes, two targets. He had forty four total yards and a touchdown. Like, <laughs> I'm, I just can't mess. I just can't. You know, like uh, with that. Yes, one hundred percent, without a doubt. Yeah, Russ is gonna cook. Russ is back. Russ is back in the kitchen this week, boys and girls. And uh, it's time to cook again because they get the Jets and. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that. In the end, end of take. Yeah, they get the Jets. Yeah, finally, I th- I think the utensils are cleaned, the the pantry is stocked. Let them cook. Corey Davis available on waivers. Do I put him in over Ty or Dobbins? Yes. Who yes. you put him in over? Dobbins. Ty. Hmm. Man. Who does Baltimore have this week? Why am I not seeing this anywhere? Baltimore? They play Cleveland. Hmm. Yeah. Why is that? Ah, never mind. I see it now. You like Dobbins in that timeshare over T.Y. going up against the Raiders? Yeah, so, I mean, I think if, depending on the way this game script goes, so Rivers is dealing with, like, a really severe case of turf toe, which is why we've been seeing uh, Jacoby Brissett and stuff like that get, get checked into the game. This is a this is a good matchup. Don't get me don't get me twisted. But I think if also if the if the Colts can run the ball, they're going to run the ball. And I know that's exa- also what the Raiders want to do. Um, I just like Corey Davis a little bit more. Uh, and I think J.K. Dobbins, you know, in a game that could end up being a back and forth affair, that he's going to be involved in the passing game as well. So I, I do like J.K. Dobbins. Continuing on. Do you just go straight waiver wire here and pick up Acres, put him in over Dobbins, and then play Davis over Ty? What What is Walido doing? Why are we getting nickel and dime with all these questions? Like, like one question, Walido. You don't get seventeen, okay, in a row. God. Yes. Remember, we we start charging at question eighteen. <laughs> I th- I think you're at fourteen already. Uh, yeah, I, going, I would play acres over all of them. So you're going straight waiver wire here and going acres and Davis. Yeah. So then just drop TY back, just drop him back into the pond. If you, if that's, if that's what you need to do and pick him up. And this is, this is, this is Ebron. Yeah. Go, uh, go Ebron there, Ronnie. Question 15 for Walido. Trubisky or Ryan. That's uh, Ryan. I'm proud of you. It was tough because I, I thought about it. I actually <laughs> thought about it for a second. I was like, should I? No, I can't. I love. I, I really do like Mr. Trubisky this week. I really do. Great matchup against Houston. But you got to go Matt Ryan there. Eric out here clinching buys. Let's go, ED. Let's, let's not go, ED. Um Herbert, CMC, Taylor, Hunt, Gallman, Dehop, Keenan. I see why you clinched the uh, clinch to buy there, Eric. Kelsey, defense, minute buff. Drop wait, you two don't have, wait, wait, you don't you don't have three tight or three defenses, do you, there, Eric? Seems like it. 
use use this bye week to drop two of those and you know you know see if uh see if guys like Akers and you know Corey Davis are, are available Kiki Cootie and uh, Mims. I want it to happen it is gonna happen like this year it's already happened this year. Like he, he just hasn't had that, that like put all together 60. monster game. Okay. Mm. But for this year, like probably not. We only got a couple weeks left. But yeah, if, if CMC is healthy, then you just rock him and Taylor as your your two running backs. D Hop and Keenan and Kelsey. That that is that is the trump card there. He's just been absolutely balling out. I saw somebody say Kelsey is going to be a first round redraft pick next year, and saying like I don't care, I don't. It's, it's not that hot of a take. It's no, really gets, not. Gets, no, because he gets to, he he goes like top of the second anyways. So for yeah. in most leagues, so it's not really that big of a like a, yeah. a leap to take, and he no. he won't. And if you want to take him in the first, take him in the first, like. He's putting up wide receiver numbers, like legitimately putting up wide receiver one numbers right now, and he continues to do it every year. But then every year, people gotta try to get hot, right, with their takes and be like, "Well, this is gonna be the year that that George Kittle overtakes him, or or Mark Andrews is gonna outscore him this year." Like, no, but he just he just continues. He's he's now has five straight seasons of a thousand yards. Like this continues to crush, and he has Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback. You want to take him in the first round? Take him in the first round. Like there is such a disparity between it is such an advantage to having Travis Kelsey. Rest of list, <laughs> like you know, like yeah. like George Kittle is, is is obviously close uh, when he's healthy is like super close to him. Um, I, I think it's them too. Like it's those two guys, and then everybody else, right? And then just even the difference between like the number five tight end. I guess Darren Waller probably deserves to be in the conversation with those guys, yeah. but still, Talk it's still. You. You know, but past those guys, like really past those three, like they're it's, it's really nobody else. Like, and it, it is an advantage to get one of those guys. And Travis Kelsey provides you like the strongest floor on the weekly basis to bet he's going to be able to give you. Like, you're getting a wide receiver one, you're able to play him there. But you're also, if you're paying playing for the, for the first round, you're also paying that draft capital for him. Where to be honest with you, like I wouldn't take him in the first round because I'm I'm trying to get a running back in the first round, depending yeah. on what I'm picking. Unless I'm picking it like the you know the eleven turn. twelve turn or yeah. something like that, then I think you could do it. I think it would be a little bit more viable because obviously you have that running back there that you can take. But um, if I'm picking you know top eight, I, I want a running back. Yeah. Speaking of Kelsey, we got Twitch in the building. Rate my team: Mahomes, CMC, Zeke, Adams, Woods, Kelsey, and AJ Brown or Gaskin or Mostert, but AJ Brown. Uh, fucking rock solid. Excellent. Killed it. Yeah. A, a plus. I, I, f- I feel like with this one, like you just wanted to come in, drop your proverbial nuts on the table and just tell every- like, Hey everybody, look, look, look over here. You, you see my nuts on the table. Hey guys. Don't act like guys. you're not impressed. <sighs> nice, nice squad. Nice, nice set of nuts there. You got on the table. Oh, this is going back to Eric's question with the uh, you know with the, with the three defenses, Cootie, Beasley, McKissick, Hilton. I I would pick up all those and yeah, drop drop two of the defenses. You could I, drop all honestly. You could drop all three if you really wanted to because you don't have to play anybody this week and then make a decision next week depending on what may happen um, and, and where things stand because you never know who could get hurt or whatever. But I would pick up I'll, PT. Yes, I was just going to say also, uh, if that is Mike Williams, you are never going to play Herbert and Keenan and Mike Williams. So I would drop Mike Williams and I would pick up T.Y. I, I think you could literally pick up all of those waiver options. Yeah, I, That's what I'm saying. I would pick up all four of those. If you have Mike Williams, you could drop him too. And then you can make the decision on the defense next week. Yeah. Cup. Cup. Brent plays Madden. Come for that jersey. Hit that sub button. Give us a thumbs up. We appreciate all yins. 
Cards, Ravens, Cowboys. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go Ravens. Yeah, uh, yeah, go Ravens. Yeah. Yeah. Tan coming through. Let's go. Another bye week. Love it. We, we don't even we normally don't even get start set questions from Tan. He's normally asking us the uh the survivors and he had the he had the Thanksgiving question a couple weeks back. Tan just sitting back taking notes. Asking about other shit, just paying attention. I, I do have a question. I do have a question. Um, I just want to know. Just, just put it out there, uh, and, and and the chat can answer as well. Uh, what is your just really quickly top three Christmas movies? Just top three. Home Alone. Okay. Yes. Die Hard. Yep. Uh, okay. And I think it's the only one other one I know. Really? Of all, uh, you never seen Elf? Oh, okay, yeah, there we go. What, what what other ones are there? There's all kinds. There's there's tons of them. There's Elf. There's Home Alone two, which is also good. Uh, the Santa Claus movies with Tim Allen. Uh, Christmas with the Cranks. Um, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, uh, do you know which one isn't a Christmas movie though? Die Hard, not a Christmas movie. Die Hard, Home Alone, Elf. Bruce Willis even said that it's not a Christmas movie. I don't give a fuck what he said. Okay, he was in the movie. Gonna... Dennis just... the Menace. <laughs> Where did that come from? Oh, the Grinch. That's a good one too. I, uh, I yes. That one. yes. Yeah, that's a good one too. But from yep, Elf. Yeah, El- Elf has to be in the list. Okay, yeah, it has yeah, to be in the list. Yeah. But it's it, it is Home Alone for sure. Oh yeah, Na- uh, uh, National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. Mm. Yes, that was in that was in the list. So it's Home Alone, Elf, and then uh, Christmas Vacation. That that's that's the list. Jim Carrey's The Grinch was he was so good. Yes, Christmas Vacation. Yep, there's a lot of Christmas vacations going on. Yep, that's a good one. Santa Claus is also good. I do like that. It's just so funny seeing the uh, like the graphics. In that movie, like compared to like some of the shit they they can do now, it was just like the reindeer just look like they're. <laughs> it's just so bad. Oh, the Family Man with Nicholas Cage that was a good one too. Never heard of it. What you trying to get from Santa this year? Some sleep. Would be would be pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Some brain. <laughs> I get I'm done. Uh, yeah. So anyways, I just I was just curious because you know Christmas is only a couple of weeks away. So, and speaking of Christmas is only a couple of weeks away, uh, we're giving back to you guys, right? Santa's for coming from TFA this year. Hold up the jersey. Hold it up. I can't. I can't. Some brain, he says. <laughs> So we're going to be giving that bad boy away to one of you in the and the in our YouTube community, right? You guys have helped us. You guys helped us grow. We had a vision over the off season uh, to want to grow this the the brand because I don't feel like there's a uh, there's enough really top quality fantasy content out there on YouTube. So we decided to make the transition, and because of the support we've gotten, because to be honest with you, uh, you know we had a goal and um, we've come. Uh, well, much further than I thought we were going to that quickly because especially on YouTube, it's harder to grow. So we wanted to give back. So we did. And now we're giving away a Allen Robinson jersey, authentic Allen Robinson signed uniform just to subscribe. That's all you got to do is click the subscribe button. That is it. And we're also going to be doing some other stuff. We're going to be doing some T-shirts, some other giveaways, stuff like that. And uh, we're going to be giving it away on the 27th of December, which is the championship Sunday show. And we'll be giving it out. And one of you lucky people, just for, just for clicking a button, Clicking a button, are gonna get a free jersey. That's it. Simple. Couldn't be any more simple. Eduardo, I was trying to find your uh, your the question here with uh, that you were thrown out to 
the YouTube chat, but I cannot scroll far enough up to uh, to see it. So I hope we got to it. If not, drop it at the bottom, and we'll uh, we will revisit that one. Up, oh, you're muted. Wasn't it this one? Yeah. Did, did he we... was wondering if we should drop him. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. For for cutie. That's right. And again, yeah. I think I, I think I would just hold on to him. Yeah. And yes, eight hundred subs. If you ain't subbed, quit playing. Quit playing. Not playing out here. Debo or Cup or Geo at the flex. It is Cup, but it's it's actually really close because I like yes. Geo quite a bit this week against Dallas. Like we saw what just happened with Dallas's defense uh, last night, and where the Ravens had three running backs go over seventy yards, three. Okay, this is how this, this, that defense is so fucking bad. My only concern with Geo in terms of that is, are they going to give him the usage? Um, he. They're still a team that wants to uh, to um, be a pass first offense, even without Joe Burrow. Which, okay, fine. They're just whatever. running at a at a slower pace now, right? And so with that, like I think it does limit his sitting a little bit. That's why I have him as like a low end RB two, and so I would just prefer Cup a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. It it, it is closer than it than it should be, though. Jason H has a quarterback question. Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, or Mitchell Trubisky? Yeah, I would go with the stack of Matt Ryan. Um, I do like Kirk Cousins uh, this week because I think that this is going to be a game that they're going to have to throw the ball. It is not a great matchup for Dalvin Cook. I would expect I would uh, temper my expectations for Cook this week because Tampa Bay has been one of the best run defenses in all of football this year. And I mean, Dalvin Cook is banged up a little bit, so. Um, I think this is another game that that, that uh, Kirk Cousins can chuck the rock, but I just lean a little bit more towards Matt Ryan. Hey, Dalvin, we, we know you have an injury history. We know you're banged up. Here's 32 fucking touches. <laughs> On a season that they're probably out of it. Just Z- Zimmer, me, Zimmer needs to go. He gots to go. Have PPR here from Tam Moster Hunt Cooks or Pittman in the Cooks. flex. Does Gilmore go into the slot? No, not really. Um, I, I don't think you're gonna. I wouldn't expect him to see that. That's why I would go Cup. That's I would go Cup. Pittman or Ty from Jesus. Uh, Ty. Yeah, I mean, the the targets are still semi there for Pittman. He hasn't completely fallen off a cliff. He did have that one stinker where he had the the nine targets, but only like two or three catches. But everything else has kind of been in that like that. If you're playing full PPR, he's been kind of living in that like eight to ten range. But T.Y. Hilton has really come on the past two weeks. So I don't know if maybe he was banged up. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to roll T.Y. there as well. Akers, Dobbins, Gordon over Marvin Jones. Yeah, I would start all well. I would have Gordon at one. I would go. Let me see. So I, I mean, I would go Akers. Then Dobbins, then Gordon. In terms of the how I'd rank the running backs, you have but Gordon last, just barely. They're all right. I mean, I have Acres at fourteen, Dobbins at sixteen, and Melvin at seventeen. Um, but I will say, if Galladay is out, then it would it would be down between Acres and Marvin for me, and I would still go Acres. I like I like Gordon in, in this matchup. I think if if Henderson is playing because Henderson missed some time, and I think that kind of led to 
Akers seeing that that high snap and touch percentage. And it would not surprise me because McVay just hasn't, for whatever reason, as good as he has been as a as a coach and you know, came in and you know kind of had his own thing going the the first two years with the the eleven personnel and how much he was running it. This backfield just hasn't made sense at all this season. You think it has anything to do with what happened with Todd uh, Todd Gurley? They're trying to not run him into the ground? With what happened with Gurley and how they ran him into the ground like that? I mean, maybe, but at at some point, you just have to play your best player. Right. I I like like Gordon there. So if somebody wants to help – Help Andrew out in the chat. Looks like Brent likes Acres, so he uh, Brent plays Madden. No, you don't. Uh, he agrees with you as as well, Kev. Um, so he he is saying Acres. So it looks like I am the the odd man out. Who are you flexing here for, Chris Gaskin? Gaskin. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh let's run through some of these because in true TFA fashion, we are a half hour behind on the questions. Jason H, my wide receivers are MT, Deontay, Calvin, Amari, and Corey Davis. Good for you, sir. Which two should I start? Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, Michael Thomas and Ridley. If you can flex anybody, flex Deontay. Man. I like this matchup for Amari. Over Calvin Ridley? No, not not over Ridley. Over Deontay. Oh. Didn't you say Deontay for one of them? Well, no, I said if if you could start a third, then I would go Deontay. Man. And Corey Davis up against the Jags. Mm. But he's only asking for two, so it's Michael Thomas and Calvin Ridley. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Last fish in the pond, always holding it down for us on Twitch. We appreciate you jumping in here as always. Been a, you, you've been you've been our Twitcher. We we appreciate it. Uh, Survivor League best pick of these four matchups: Dallas over Bengals, Falcons over Chargers, Texans over Bears, or Broncos over Panthers. I think it's either. I don't mind all four of them, to be honest with you, be honest. But like I would probably go Dallas. Yeah, I th- I think Dallas can do enough. And that way that gives you that gives you options going going forward as well. Cause I'm not sure how confident you're gonna feel with with Dallas the rest of the season. Yeah. Dallas over the Bengals. Uh, as bad as Dallas's defense is, this is not the offense to uh, to to pull that off. Going back to the going back to the the Kamara take. Yep, you you, you have to at, at some point, especially whenever you had the options that the uh, the question came from. Hooper or Janu? Is Robert Tanya available? Or Schultz? I would play Dalton Schultz over over both of these guys. And Dalton yeah, Schultz. I would too. Dalton Schultz is sitting around the whenever we did the waiver show, he was at like thirty percent ownership, so he should still be available. I would I would play Dalton Schultz. Uh, Miley, if you're still rocking with us, let us know if. Uh, what if about Schultz... what about Cole Komet? Would you play Cole Komet? Uh, would you rather play Cole Komet over any of these guys? Man, it he was on the waiver show as well. His usage is ticking up. He's been running a boatload more of routes and getting like you. You can see the 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 inverse relationship between these two where. Uh, where Jimmy G, his you know routes and his targets are dropping off, and Comets are picking up. But man, I I would just hope Schultz is available. <laughs> would be would be would be my take here. 
Yeah, if Schultz is yeah. out there, definitely go Schultz. But if not, I would go Johnny. And Johnny yeah. did return to practice today, so that's good news. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have it Schultz, Johnny, and then Hooper. Hooper Hooper's been such a disappointment at the at the tight end posi- position. Uh, Gallman over Kamara. Brent, I think we I think we got to this one. I think we said uh Yeah, Ravens. Yeah, we said Ravens. Got to that one. Brian Hill back in the chat. Pick three. Robinson Gallman. McKiss- I think you oh JT. Jesus. The, you, the just, JT. You, just, you just drop off the last guy. Yeah. J you go Robinson, Gallman, and, and JT. That's because you reached your limit, Walido. Maybe if you didn't ask 36 questions, I wouldn't skip any. <laughs> just keep I keep seeing just your throw, name. Just throw it in there again, Walido. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out what the, your question is. I keep seeing your name, and I, I can't I can't separate them. Walido, in all seriousness, we do appreciate you. Uh, yes. You have been, like, uh, rocking with yeah. us from the, from, from, from the jump this year, and yeah. we truly appreciate it. Even on the DFS show as well. So only because you bust my balls do I bust yours. It's it's because he he is a he's a true part of the TFA fam. He we are treating him like like one of the family. And well, later you do bust balls, so it's you know it's 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 only fair. The pug master, the pug lord, MJ coming back, Gaskin over Sanders. I can't believe this is where we are at. My but God. yes, I would play Miles Ganskin over Sanders. Yes. So I have I have Miles Sanders. So to start the week, I will say this. Um, peel back the curtain a little bit. On when I first did my original rankings, I had Miles Sanders at RB of like 12 or 11, something like that. But as I've allowed myself to process things and, and really think about all this, I moved Miles Sanders down to RB 23 or 22, I believe. And I still think that he's a borderline RB2, but I think I feel more comfortable probably in the flex. There are some some reasons to believe that there could be some upside here for my for Miles Sanders and this offense with Jalen Hurts. If this offense is able to get get going, and crazy as it is, Doug Peterson today at his press conference said that they have to get the running game going, and that's going to really help out Jalen Hurts is by getting the running game going. I'm like, like maybe you should have been doing this the last four fucking weeks, Doug. You know, but uh, regardless of that. Running quarterbacks do tend to help running backs in, the, in, a, in a sense that they open with them being able to open up lanes and you know the RPO becomes really uh, really into effect because of what you're able to do there. And the only question for Miles would be, is it like a Taysom Hill effect and he does not see the the targets that you know that, that we want to see for him? But he also hasn't been uh, as used in the, in the passing game either, which is frustrating as hell because we that was that was like kind of like his calling card last year. He was so good in the passing game, but in this situation, yes, I would play Miles Gaskin, who I think is like a top 15 running back this week, over Miles Sanders. However, for other Miles Sanders owners, I would probably still lean towards Miles Sanders in the flex, depending on what other options you have. Because I do think that while this is a, not a good matchup against the Saints, I will say that. And this offense can get a, can, can going a little bit more. Um, I do think that... Uh, Especially in the passing game, I think Miles Sanders could uh, be an interesting player because we've seen him in really bad matchups this year, where he's able to—he's uh, an explosive guy, Steelers. right? And yeah, the Steelers. Where he broke off that long touch, or he broke off that long run. Like the dude's a super explosive guy. They seem to get start using them and getting the ball in his hands. But you have to lower him down. You can't view him as the same way that we have been viewing him. So, and that is the the concern there. Right, and that, right. That, 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 yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's the kind of the, the concern with with Miles Gaskin. Spot on. Because I I've seen a lot of people uh, have Miles Gaskin ranked as like an RB one this week, and that's just too rich for me, because there is the real, real possibility that Chiefs blow the doors off the Dolphins. Like that, that, that's certainly possible with this game, and so that would be the one concern. 
How do you feel about this defensive question? I'm trying to look at the schedule here to see what kind of streamers might be. I think you're fine with the Rams at home. Oh, yeah, for sure. I would go Rams. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would say if you didn't go to Rams would be because the, they just don't throw the ball that much. Like, Cam Newton only has, like, two games this year over 200 passing yards. Like, two or three games. And one was, like, that 400-yard explosion against the the Seahawks. Seahawks, like week two, yeah. God, that that game gave me such false hope. Hell I think, yes. I think, I think the Rams are a top – a top five probably group this week. Um, because I know, they, you know the, the Pats have um, injuries across that offensive line too. But Whatever. if Seattle, if it's available, I think th- I have them at number one this week at, at, at defense. Yeah. Man, the, the Jamal Adams revenge game. Do you think he decapitates somebody? I, I think that is... A legitimate question. He may he may just you know accidentally just destroy <laughs> Adam Gase on the sideline. That could be possible too. This is Tanyan. Yep. Father of three. Nice nice to see a, a, a new face in here. Serious trouble with QB card to a Trubisky or Dalton this week. Oh yeah. Mitchell Trubisky. Uh it is. Just embrace it. It's Mr. Trubisky. They're playing Houston. Yeah, but Dalton's playing the Bengals. True. <laughs> but still, I could go with Trubisky. I I'm I'm going Dalton. I, I, I can't I can't do Trubisky. Can't do it. Won't do it. Give give me the the potentially better quarterback with the better weapons. Lenny in here just helping us out in the chat. We uh, we appreciate it, Lenny. Yep. Yep. Total wasteland. We thought it was going to be good. Was not. Drop Pittman for TY. I think you could... It kind of feels like a a lateral move. Yeah, but I will say this: the Colts get uh, the Colts get the Texans also next week too. So I think you could if you wanted. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think you have to, but I, no. I, I I think you could. No defensive question: Colts D, Rams D. Rams. Yeah. Preston Newsom, another new name in here. Appreciate uh appreciate all the all the new faces. Lenny, I think you might be a, a, a new face as well. Uh make sure you hit that subscribe button. Lenny? Lenny's been here before. Has is he a DFS oh, yeah. guy? I don't think so, but no, Lenny's been here. Huh. Oh, bad Santa. I just saw that. Yes, that is such a great call. Such a yes, that that is Lenny. I, I apologize if uh, Lenny Kuis. Man, this guy's running back. So he has he has. Wait, wait a second. Wait. This is what I would do, Preston. I would sit Alvin Kamara. And go Zeke, JT, and Jones. I'm gonna regret this. You know I will. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna go for like 35. I mean, with with those other options too. Like it's not like any of those guys. The the questionable one would be JT, just because of the the usage concerns. Because for whatever fucking reason. They want to keep giving Jordan Wilkins five to seven carries per game. That would be the only one that that's questionable with, with that group. I don't think it's egregious. So if, if you want to start Kamara, that you could, um, I know you have JT as a top 10 option or a top an RB one this week. I have JT at like 13. Um, 
I do like Zeke quite a bit. So for me, if if you, if, if you want to play Kamara, it'd be Kamara, uh, Jones, and then I would, but I would I would flex Zeke. Mm-hmm. 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 Claypool over Samuel or Cooks. Yes, I would start him over Brandon Cooks. Not and Samuel. I don't think Samuel's gonna play. Like unless I saw he was on the COVID list with DJ Moore. He may have just been a close contact, so I guess it's possible he could get cleared in time. But Let's 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 say he's cleared. How do you how do you how would you rank these these three? Uh Claypool, Cooks, and Samuel. Claypool over Cooks, huh? Well, if you were if you would remove your fucking bias. It's it's not it's not the bias. I was just talking today about how I was wrong on Claypool. I was wrong. I I'm a man. I'm forty. Come at me. I'm a man. This is easy. It's Claypool. Well, whatever. That's that's your that's your opinion. Brian Hill, QB Watson, Robinson, Gallman, Taylor at running back Hill, Diggs, wide receiver, tight end Goddard. Put him for McKissick, Kuti, and KC in that order. Drop one of the defense, Brian. You don't need to have two. I would honestly go, well, no. The, either, either way about it, you, drop KC because next week they're playing the Saints. Well, he, he doesn't have KC. He put in, put in for him. Oh, what? just, just, yeah. I mean, I, I would rather go KC for this week. If you, if you want to do that, that's fine. If you can get them, um, I, I, I think they're both very close and where I would want either one of them. But yeah, I would probably prefer uh, the Chiefs going against Tua. And I would put Kiki in front of McKissick. Yeah, but who's he? I mean, maybe he has somebody on the bench, but yeah, but yeah, that's that's the way I would do it. I would go. I would go. Kuti and then the defense. I don't think you. And then I wouldn't make any changes to your your starting lineup. the The only changes I'd make here would just be the order of your your waivers. Well, unless you got the Chiefs defense. Right, right. But are you going to put KC as your your top priority to make sure you get them over those other two? No, because I think there's a better chance that Kuti that would would come off the board and, and McKissick for that matter. Gaskin Baby or Jesus. Ward. Sweet, sweet. Nine pound, six ounce. Baby Jesus. Now I'm in the front row. Hammer drunk. I'm all okay. jacked up a Mountain Dew. Miles Gaskin or Robert Woods. Been leaning Gaskin since Casey run defense looks suspect. And Woods is facing a tough red hot. New England defense. This is Miles Gaskin. But there is concern here. I will just say that. There is concern because if the Chiefs are able to get up quickly, it could be bad news for Miles Gaskin. I think Gaskin's been been getting some looks though. Right, but how many I how, mean, how often have they I mean and can you point me in the direction oh, of the games they've gotten their heads beat in and they've just gotten or they've been down really quickly where it's like 21 nothing or anything like that? No, but still, these—I mean, these, these target totals are better than than what I expected. Um, four, seven, five, four, five, four, six, and two. So the, those target totals are, like I said, they're they're better than what I actually what I what I anticipated. I I didn't really think he'd be over he'd be over four too many times, and that's he, that's his floor outside of this past week when he only saw two. So may, maybe not as awful. As it seems, 
If McCaffrey's out, would you play Akers as an RB2 behind Chubb and then wide receiver two and flex play Woods and Juju slash Debo? Yeah, I think Akers is fine as your two. Agreed. Would you... How would you rank those three? I definitely want to play Juju. I've already talked about not liking that matchup with Woods. Would you? Would you? Would you play Debo over Woods, or would no. you just go Wood, Woods and Deep? Uh, Woods and <sighs> Woods. Yes. Thanks. Woods and Juju. Okay. Thank you. Not crazy, but. I mean, he went from, what, 13 targets down to three, I believe. It's one game, but no, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's yeah. crazy at all to think that AB could have a breakout game. Goff Rivers or Cousins? Yeah, give me Rivers. And he goes all, Philip Rivers! And you missed it. You remember that commercial with LL Cool J? The DirecTV, like Sunday ticket commercial? No? Okay. Jesus, how does my team look? Brady, Keenan, T.Y., or Pittman, Chubb, Eckler, Waller, Gallman. I think you're set up nice, and especially with the – I think people just come in the chat just to like – Yeah. Let me go flex on some people. You know, I want to strut. I want to let everybody know what what uh, what great greatness I'm rocking here on this team because that is a excellent team. Uh, but I will, I will make a suggestion. We'll make one suggestion for next year. Whether you are the commissioner or you are not the commissioner, put it up to a vote to get rid of fucking kickers, okay? Because kickers are the stone cold worst. That's all I'm going to say. But great team. Yeah, I, I think you could just add the extra flex spot. Yes. I, I don't mind. I don't, I don't. I don't mind playing with kickers. I honestly don't. But I, I would add another like flex spot, another like offensive starting position. Yeah, add flex, and, and yeah. it makes everything so much better. Yeah. K- kickers, there's like, there's no mind space there for it, right? Like, you don't think about anything. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, you spend one second thinking about who you're going to play a kicker, right? Like, I, f- I feel like adding a flex and getting around a kicker rewards good drafting and for people that are able to have some foresight and stuff like that. And so that is why that I, I just hate kickers. And so then, Sh- uh, yes, pick up Schultz. Yes. Yeah. Go- going back an hour and a half ago. Yes. Pick up Schultz. Uh, Ashton rocking with us might have the uh, the goat Avi out of the uh, out of everyone here that rocks with us in, in the in the YouTube chat. Appreciate you. Be like Ashton. Hit that sub. I mean, you don't have to. You can let someone else have the, you know better odds of getting that sweet sweet Allen Robinson jersey. But you should. If you don't, that's on you. I don't know why you wouldn't. Maybe you don't like. Maybe you don't like free stuff. Some people don't. You know, some people people want to earn it. You know, they don't want to. They, you know, given, not earned, or earned, not given. But there it is. So if people think that's oh they're bullshitting. They don't. They're not really got a jersey. There it is. Waiting for one of you, waiting for one of you. It will be in one of your somebody's hands here in a couple of weeks. Well, three weeks maybe. You know, with shipping and everything. Yeah. It's gonna be uh like like we said Sunday December twenty seventh whenever we do the uh, the Sunday game day show that we kick off at eleven a.m. Hopefully Eastern. hopefully we're winning somebody a championship and then they're also winning an Allen Robinson jersey. Mm. What a what a nice little Christmas gift that would be. Father of three already got it. Browns fan thirty two. Should I drop Tyler Boyd for Cam Akers? Yes. Do you need to do that though with that, that running back group? Chubb, Carson, Zeke, Monty, and JT. 
Do you need to do that? You never know what the way running backs have been this year. Like I, I want as many running backs as I can get. You could say the same thing about the wide receivers. I mean, well, AJ Brown, Godwin, DJ Moore on COVID. So I guess it, oh, and Diggs. I forgot about Diggs. So yeah, he's got Diggs, AJ Brown, Godwin. You can lock those in. Woods is still a strong wide, you know, fourth wide receiver. Yeah. But you're yeah. probably never going to start one of those guys because of how strong your running backs are. You're going to want to play those guys. So yeah. I, Regardless of that, because like Zeke's like Zeke's matchups um, get tougher as well. Um, so, yeah, I um, I, I would pick up Akers. Lenny with me. Lenny's with me. Um, again, because we like to win, and. Chris Carson is dealing with the, you know, is still messing around with his foot injury thing. Uh, he's still playing, but I mean, he could go down and anything else can happen here. So again, you hoard running backs. This is the time of year. You just hoard your fucking yeah. running backs. Yeah. That's a fair point. Our ma'am, Tam. Best flex, Gaskin, Drake, Juju, or Mike Davis. Well, since I 100% believe CMC is going to be back, it's just it's it's Miles Gaskin. Mm. You like Gaskin over Juju? Yes. If CMC for whatever reason is out, where would Davis slide in this group? It would be Mike Davis. That's who I would go with. Okay. JT against the Raiders or Geo against the dead last Cowboys run defense at the Flex. Yeah, Lenny, you, you go you go with Taylor. So proud of you today, Kev. Well, I mean, I feel like I mean I'll be honest with you, like if you're gonna give me things for <laughs> If you're gonna get me anything for Christmas, get me a back brace because you know I've just been carrying the show all year. That was that was that was funny. I thought it was good. Mm. Sorry, right. it was a three. It was like a three out of ten. Yeah, you, you you've had better. Like whatever you, I, That's I, what I you said. I, I've definitely heard that from from her. That that is that that is for sure. Uh, well, Lito, I, I definitely didn't see this. My my apologies. And if I skipped over, if anyone's still rocking with us, and I skipped over questions, my uh, my bad. I don't think I skipped over it, Lito. I think you probably just entered fifteen fucking questions at the same time, and I just didn't didn't happen to see it. I I actually do but, remember seeing this question because I remember. Um, him asking this. Um, so I, I, oh, I did of see course, it. Kev running to Walido's defense now. Hey, Fuck you, Kev. But uh, I will say this. He does not go to the dumpster fire. T- typically, especially rookie quarterbacks, tend to lean more heavily on their tight ends. Um, that, that, uh, so I still think that he's fine. And let's be honest, it's the tight end position, and you're not likely going to find a whole hell of a lot better sitting out there for you. So I think he, I think you can play him comfortably. Coming through again. Thank you, Lenny. Is that really? I th- I'm not, I'm starting to wonder. Is that your burner? Is, do you have a burner in this chat right now? I think that's what's happening. So what if I do? Who cares? It's an it's another sub for the for the <laughs> <laughs> No, I I don't think he goes to the dumpster fire. And Goddard is what Hurst does well is he throws he throws he throws a really nice deep ball. Goddard can get you know. Down, downfield, down the seam. Ertz does not look like he can at this point. So I, I do, I do not believe that he goes to the the dumpster fire. You think you can? You think you could beat uh, Zach Ertz at a you know, in his uh, white New Balances? Do you think you could beat him in a race? Not a chance. His career? Not not a chance. No, I don't know. I think I could. I think I could go out Stop. there. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Strap on my Nikes, and me, me and Zach could go out there, and I think I'd give him a run for his money. Well, if anybody has has a connection 
to uh, to Zach Ertz. We have we have to set. My God, I I I would pay endless. I would go in debt for the rest of my life to see you fucking race Zach Ertz. I am an incredible athlete. Okay, I, you may not be able to tell it with the hoodie I have on and the, the Santa hat, but uh, I am an incredible athlete. Okay, it just pours through my veins. If I didn't join the military to serve my country to make sure that you had a free country, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive I would, I, I could have went D1. I'd be at the pros right now. But here I am because I, I, I am a, I am for the people. Since you are a veteran, I'm gonna let that one go. I, that, I, there's really, I, I can't say anything to that. You, you just pull out that trump card whenever you want to, don't you? I do. It's laid out there. Just drop it. <laughs> Drop them out. Let me, let me. Brady or Allen? This is Brady for me. Really like Tom Brady this week. Yes. Same as these, Curtis. Um, back to Ashton. It's smart to have Rams and Browns D for week 15 and 16. Both play the Jets or just shop one of them. In 10 team, no. First of all, based in any team size league, you should not carry two defenses. Rams, you can. Oh, you do. I think Ashton had the uh, the bye week this week, so I would just hold on to the Rams, let them play week fifteen, and then yeah, you can figure it out from there. Yeah, yeah, because I I don't think anybody is going outside of week sixteen. No one's going to look at the Browns' defense and think you have to hold them for that week. And then I, I don't see anybody who's left in the playoffs running out to grab Browns' defense. So the, the only way that you're not going to have them available is if someone picks them up either this week or next week, loses, and then does, you know, I mean, doesn't drop them. So the Browns should still be there for you 100% to pick up if you want to pick them up in week 16. Yeah, agreed. Faux show. Yes, H-dub. Yes, Correct. TT or <laughs> Higgins or Cootie? I'm gonna also, go kill. Has, also has Cooks. Oh. Mm. Then yeah, I'd go Higgins. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Wally, though. Fuck you, okay? Yeah, you know, I try to stand up for you, but you know what? Re- revoked. You're 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 out. You're out of the circle of trust. Uh, well, Lido, I promise to never intentionally skip all of your questions again. Sorry that was happening uh, today. You 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 made your way back into my circle of trust. Worried about McLaurin's ankle injury enough to start Mike Williams or A B instead. No, I mean, I think if he plays, I think he can pretty much. Yeah, I think he's good to go. I mean, that was a tough matchup against, uh, I guess the Steelers. Sorry, I was trying to look up to see where San Fran sits in terms of fantasy points to uh, to wide receivers. Because I think you could go A, B in this matchup. I don't love sitting Terry McLaurin. No, no. I mean, I do have Terry McLaurin down on what I I, – last for most of the year I've had him as a wide receiver one. This week I have him at wide receiver 19. So I do have him. I did lower him, but – um, I'm still have him higher than all those other the, than ever, all the other options that he had. See, this is why Kev says this. He just wants people to talk about him. No, no, that's not no, that's not true at all. United United States Navy, hoorah! Does the Navy say that? Yeah, I thought that was a Marines thing. No, they, I think they say who ya. Yahoo? No. Yeah, might as well be. 
T.Y. or Higgins, this one is T.Y. Oh, sorry, Curtis. Uh, well, I have enough volume to start. It. Yeah, I, I think Waller is. Uh... Absolutely. He's the yeah. only guy they got. Yeah. And, and it's not just the 200-yard performance he just had. I, Waller has been, outside of like Hawkinson and Kelsey, has been one of the only consistent. Gronk is coming on. But they do have a B. I'm not Evans. setting them for Waller. Yeah. Trey joining us in the chat. Good to see you in here. Made the playoffs by a hair. Hey, a hair or a, or a mile. doesn't matter. You made, made the playoffs. Full PPR. Choose two. Deontay, Woods, Cooks, Swift, Gurley. Kev is, lock, Kev is locking in Gurley. No, you're not. I do have something to say about that. But uh, choose two. It's Deontay and Swift if Swift plays. If Swift does not play, they go Brandon Cooks. But I will also say drop Todd Gurley. You can drop Todd Gurley. Like there's no reason to hold on to Todd Gurley at all. Drop Todd Gurley. You're wasting your time holding on to him. He's done. Like drop Todd Gurley. I don't even have – I actually – I have Todd Gurley ranked 56 this week. You dropped him down more. Yes. Whoo! He he was sitting at what the bottom of the RB three ranks before, right? Initially, that's when I first had him. But but remember what I said was on the show that we did last night was uh, I really wouldn't play him under under like I would have to be desperate to play Todd Gurley. This situation, you're not desperate to play Todd Gurley. Um, he's just he's unstartable for me. Goddard or Hunter? I'm going to roll Henry there. Yes, I'm going to go Hunter Henry. Debo, Dobbins, Shepard at the flex. Dobbins. Better add the Browns to play Giants and Jets. Or instead, add Rams just to play in fifteen. Just add the Ram. If the Rams are playing the Jets in fifteen, add the Rams and figure out sixteen. You 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 got to get there first, Ashton. You, you got you got to get there first. Don't don't worry about sixteen, especially with the fucking defense. So the way I, the way I would play it would be this: I, I if you wanted to pick up for sixteen, just to have to have the security of getting them. I, this is the way that I that I would do it. Okay. I would not be worried at all about this week. You could go ahead and drop the the Browns. Next week, by Saturday, you know, once we kind of have a good idea, because at that point you have one week left, right? I think then you could pick them back up and be ready for the next week in the event that you make it. Because by that point, we, you have a fucking week left, right? Like there's not going to be something crazy that's going to happen by that point with week 16. So I think you could do it. Um, I would just I, I would drop it for now. Add somebody, you know, and uh, depending on who's all out there, and then next week I would just re-add them. Dan, we're we're gonna close out with uh with with your comment. Uh, Michael Laraca need to pick three for the playoffs: Keenan Allen, Julio Jones, Deontay Johnson, Jarvis Landry, Kiki Cootie. This is the part of the show where Kevin has a stroke. <laughs> uh, I need to pick three for the playoffs. Keenan, Julio, Deontay, Jarvis. Uh, Keenan, Julio, and Deontay. Yeah. All right. It's, it's getting weird. We need to uh, we, we, we need to wrap this up. Vert. Rocking with us in the Twitch chat. Good to see you, Vert. Haven't seen you around for a little bit. Nice to see. Nice to see your your virtual face. Miles wants to know Dobbins Hollywood or Dobbins in flex. I mean, it's Dobbins. Dobbins one or Dobbins two. I either one. I think I think it's close, but I I'd probably go towards a little bit towards Dobbins one. Miles, let us know if uh, if there was somebody else you meant instead. 
Although I do like the fact that Hollywood has started, like that squeaky wheel is finally starting to to see itself uh, turn out here a little bit. There is Vert. Will Croft. Ben or Hill. I'm going to go Taysom. Chase him with Taysom. Lenny, if you're referring to marijuana, this is my eyes are glossy because I'm literally running on three hours of sleep. Oh, see, now you're changing it. You're, you're moving the goalposts. Earlier it was two, now it's three. Hey, you don't need to come out here and give us the, give the people this stuff, okay? You know, like you don't have to try to fabricate a story. Vert, Vert made the playoffs because of us. We appreciate you, Vert. Not, you know, there's, there's no. Ah, uh, see, there it was. T.Y. Hilton is the third one. So, Dobbin, still J.K. Dobbins in a standard league. All right, we appreciate all you guys rocking with us. If you want a chance to win that sweet, sweet Allen Robinson jersey, that you know, you could look at the bottom of your screen. You know, see, see the nice little picture down there, or your cow right there, right there. A Rob jersey. Just hit that subscribe button. Let us know that you are here for the for the giveaway. We're also going to be giving away TFA T-shirts. And uh, see, this this is why he's he's the best. Yeah, I, when I, I saw I, the Jets lose on a last minute hell mary by Derek Carey last or Derek Carr Carey? last week, all I could think of was the Jets must feel like they're dragging their balls over hot sand. Seven miles. But, <laughs> The best, That's the best why ever. Tan is the best. I'd rather drag my balls through hot sand. That's why. See, I, that that was like that was one of those things. I'm like, man, I, I I have to remember to use that at some point. Now I forgot about it. And here's Tan just bringing it, it, it back. That's what it was. I'd drag my balls through seven miles of hot sand just to lick her ass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> Maybe I did, Bolito. You know whose whose side are you on? I, I I don't I don't get this. Lenny, hit that fucking subscribe button. We're going to be giving this away on December twenty seventh during our live Sunday show, uh, the the game show that kicks off at eleven a.m. Eastern. Don't wait until the twenty sixth. Don't procrastinate. Hit that fucking subscribe button now. Give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment. We appreciate all you guys. Any other questions you have, please uh, leave a comment on one of the videos. We'll make sure we get to it. We will be going live on uh, on Sunday morning again. Like I said, Kev, what, what what are you what are you pointing to, buddy? It's it's, it's getting it's getting weird now. Well, don't you want to know? I don't actually. So on that note, we're gonna get out of here, guys. We appreciate you. Best of luck in uh, in week one of your playoffs. Make sure you join us. Uh, you know, like like Kev was alluding to several times during the during the show, we will have a rankings videos coming out. We have a quarterback one. That one seems to be doing well. Glad you guys are enjoying that. Have running back and receiver coming at you as well. And then if you uh, if you need a streaming option for tight end, we did the streams on Sunday, and you can find the timestamp in that video. Hit that subscribe. Have a great week, and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye.